briefly about what the purpose of education is? Well, the traditional purpose is to make people better human beings, and in democracies, to make them better citizens. How many of the, your teachers would have agreed with that, do you think? I think maybe broadly they may have agreed with that. Um, I'm not sure that... What, did, would, what would they, the majority of them, how would they answer that question? What is the purpose of uh, higher, by the way, higher education? Higher education. Um, I think they would answer it and say it would be the, you know, the transfer of knowledge. That's what I think they would say. I would probably it, say it's something where it will lead to make a lot of, of money. Of course, it gets yeah. you a job. Yeah. That's what Some of them might say, you know, to develop certain skills or, you know, critical, be able to be a critical thinker or something like that. Well, a critical thinker so that you could know who to vote for. I mean, you know, it's not like critical, uh, you know, how to make a moral decision in the difficult uh, situation. So is, 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 is learning, I guess, basic things, is that considered something different than education in the uh, well, we're talking, traditional... I, I want to talk about higher education. So it has to be higher than high school. It has to be higher than junior college. And it has to be education. What we see in most of our colleges is not higher and it's not education. It's tra training people how to be a, to do a job. And I'm convinced that most of the people you're dealing with see it that way. So it's... Um... Look, what is the most popular major in all the universities and colleges? What would you say? No, it's not. I wish it was. Business? It's business by far. It doesn't even come close. By I guess far. because I was in education, I know yeah. a lot of educators, but yeah. I just think yeah. business has to be. It's not, even, it's not even close. Wow. So this is, this is the, uh, what they sell us. This is what the business uh, schools sell us. That if you want to get a good job, you have to go four years and take mostly business courses. Then you're hired by some business, right? And in a month, they have a training program. Now remember, we're talking about four years versus a month. And in that month, they teach you supposedly everything you need to know to help them run their business. And there's only one reason why they're running their business, and that is to... Profit. Hello, hello. It's good to see you again. Hi. It's OK. So here's four years versus one month. You're in the business school, aren't you? I am. Yeah, you're right on I thought time. You, I thought you were going into... Uh, is that what you had planned to do? Go into a business, go to business school? No, I was going to go to law school. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. You were going to Spain to go to law school? Wow, that's still maybe on the table, but now I'm getting an MBA right now. I'm, uh, right I'm here? Weeks from being done. Right here? Right here. We were talking about how the, the most popular major around the country is in all universities and colleges are, is business, by far. It's not even close. It's because of its applicability to all fields and everything. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, you're going to get a job. So you weren't a business major as an undergraduate. Well, let's say you were a business major as an undergraduate and now you're getting an MBA. So that would be six years, right? Approximately six years. If you added up your undergraduate and your graduate program, you'd be taking 80% at least of the courses would be business courses. So now you get a job at some kind of international business where you stand a chance to make a very good salary someday. And they set you up in their executive training program. The executive training program probably will take a month. And in that month, they'll teach you everything you need to know to run that business at whatever level you're going to be at. Starting out naturally in a ju junior position. So how do you explain the six years then? It's, it's all about weeding out, right? It's, it's just about like what? creating a minimum threshold of
commitment that you can gauge people's effectiveness by. Well, commitment like, to what? Commitment to academic certification, commitment to being a member of a system, commitment... Like, Dedicated I, to what? I, look, I, I agree with No, no, I mean, I'm just trying... <laughs> I, I, I'm not having an I, argument at all, but dedicated to what? No, well, it? dedicated to functional, foundational knowledge that shouldn't take six well, years to learn. Well, she'll tell you what. Dedicated to Granted. what? Dedicated to what? Tell them. Is it the system? Making money. I mean, I mean she, she just said that. I mean, but how do you explain... Now, if anything was a con job, I, I mean, that is clearly a We're talking about what should the purpose be of higher education. The purpose of higher education, sir. I was wondering what I walked into. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, because this was a question that she just had a thesis defense in her graduate program in psychology, and that question came up. So it's, it's certification, right? <laughs> That's the purpose of higher education. Well, to get a job. And it's not business. material, though. It's, huh? it's not really material. I mean, for the most part, it's about Well, the traditional, the, the, the traditional purpose of higher education, it had to be higher and it had to be education, was to make people, <laughs> was to make people better people, better human beings. First, figure out, try to figure out what is a human being, who knows, what does he talk about? It. Oh, well, business school doesn't do that. Well, up sure. to the point, and then how to be a better citizen. Psychology doesn't do that. Yeah, psychology definitely. Well, but I mean, you know, uh, so so how how is it so surprising that we get the presidents that we get? <laughs> I mean, the stock market has gone up since Trump uh, became president. Yep. So, from a business perspective, undergraduate and graduate, he's wonderful. Right. It's because businesses, large businesses, like a vacuum of certainty and of power. They they operate better in the. It hasn't been great for a couple of sectors, like the banking industry. That wants very well, it's been horrible stuff. for the world. So, I mean, yeah. so that's the point. At any rate, there's, you know, that's what it's all about. Be, because being a bit, uh, uh, even if you're in business or if you're in psychology, you're also a human being. And, you're, and in a democracy, you're also supposed to be a citizen. And one would think those would be more important. If you can learn what to do in a business in a month, Shouldn't it take longer to uh, think about what it takes to be a better human being? And I think you've hit the nail on the head, though. It's a six-year indoctrination period. Well, but it's... <laughs> so are they... It's, it's, not, it's not an indoctrination. It's just a con job. Yeah. I mean, I have radically different views and perspectives on the world than all of my peers that went to... that had undergrads in accounting and business and so on and so on, because mine's an anthropology, so... I'm coming from a very different perspective. Most of the people who paid my salary were political science majors who came, who wanted to be political science majors because they wanted ultimately to be lawyers. What would be the most appropriate subject to major in if you wanted to be a lawyer? English. Of course. Without it, it's, not, it's not even debatable. It's all about writing. Of course it is. Reading and writing. Yeah, I was going to say philosophy. But, but, you know, no one in the political science department would ever say, don't be a political science major, you should go into English. <laughs> what is the most important tra trait to be, a, uh, to be a good psychologist? Mm. The most important. Discernment? What is that? What do you mean by that? Being able to um, look at a a, a problem or a, a, a situation and determine what's valuable about any it. Any problem in any situation? Well, no, but human human problems, problems to do with so people and their isn't thinking Isn't it caring and about human beings? Isn't that the bottom line? Caring? Yeah. Uh, I guess in applied psychology, yeah. What, what else is there other than applied uh, psychology? There's other types of psychology where you don't work directly with a person, you know, you don't yeah, like, you don't, you're not you could be providing them therapy. But aren't, the conclusions, aren't the conclusions you're supposed to come up with ultimately trying to help people with their problems? Um, yeah, for, that would be for, for, yeah, for therapy, for that type of, a counseling psychologist, yeah. But even if you're not going for counseling, aren't you ultimately trying to find ways to help people deal with their daily 
personal and interpersonal problems? I guess you're trying to learn more about it, yeah. For what purpose? Isn't it because you, them, you care yeah, about human beings? Efficiency, yeah, caring as... Well, so yes. Well, 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 yes how caring. could a, how could a six-year psychology degree help you develop caring if you didn't have it already? Oh, I don't think it does. Well, it's I, do, I really it's don't. Yeah, I really don't. Scam. I really don't think it does. So, so how do you? How is uh, higher education supposed to help people become better citizens? How by is that supposed talking to about the issues. The, the, is it by reading these people's ideas about reading them? Whoever, it sounds like a good start. Reading whoever has insights that can, can, that can take you deeper into these questions, knowing full well that there are no answers to them, no final answers to them. But it's in the journey we talk about it. We're always going to be people, no matter what our occupation is. And in democracies, we're always going to be citizens, whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, or like it or not. So our futures and the future of our democracy depends on good people or people interested in what it means to be a good person and good citizens, or at least people who are interested in the subject of good citizens. And that's traditionally what higher education is. And what we have is not higher and it's not education. It's technical training. And that's what you could get in a junior college or Fortis College. So all higher education boils down to philosophy, maybe then? But it's, you can come at it from different points of view. You can come at it from a psychological, a political, a sociological. Economic. Or from literature. But ultimately, they all can, after all, the term is university. So there, that comes from two words. One is diversity, which means different approaches, but they're all supposed to come together. That's where the una comes from. And that ultimately, from a traditional point of view, is what does it mean to be a human being? What does it mean to be a decent human being? And what does it mean to be a good citizen? So from all those different perspectives, those diverse perspectives, traditionally, they're supposed to come to one. Now, the diversity is all that is important because they're so supposedly being trained people to do a job. And they may do the job very well, but they're crappy human beings and they're worse citizens. So that's the difference between thinking short term and thinking long term. So from the age of 22 to the age of 65 or 70, you may make a lot of money, live in a big house, and drive an expensive foreign vehicle. But what about afterwards? Aren't you still a human being and a citizen? And what about the ensuing years when you had contests between Donald Trump and somebody else? How would you know the difference? Remember, these traditional subjects aren't supposed to give you answers, but they're supposed to set you on the right path for getting answers from different perspectives. University. So we have the diversity, but we don't have them all coming together trying to answer the same basic, important questions. Yeah. Do you think this has, like, I guess there's something to do with, like, uh, not really teaching sort of like a broader concept of civics, like, you know, the person has like a responsibility to their community to um, to you know to be engaged to be an engaged person who's informed and who um, well that's part of it but psychology is not civics sure but, but, I mean, but you but why wouldn't in psychology the issue of what does it mean to be a human being and what does it mean to be a decent human why wouldn't that issue come up well why doesn't it come up? Because statistics can't answer those. Everyone knows that. And so through the positivistic, relativistic outlooks, all of a sudden those questions become nonsensical. I mean, but could it be that, like, since, like, you know, higher education is effective because, like, we don't teach that to people and their children? And teach their, what? 
like the idea of being a good citizen, citizenship, you know, uh, civics. Yeah, but before that, because, what does it mean to a decent human being? You can, you can investigate that question from the point of view of literature, you can investigate it from the point of view of economics, you can investigate it from the point of view of political science. Those are, from the traditional point of view, the basic. Who could argue about that, by the way? And if you're not thinking about those subjects, why are we so surprised that there are so many jackasses in the world? And so many bad citizens? Sure. But there are different ways of thinking about it. They're not just one, it's not just civics. Civics is important because if you live in a democracy, you have to know the way the system works so that you're not going to be scammed by it. So you go to an American government class and they teach you the civics, the basics of the, the judicial branch, the legislative branch, the executive branch. But, but you can also read a, a novel about the question of what does it mean to be a good citizen. Sure. So Without even mentioning that question once. It's all between the lines. I was going to say, do you, do you think that the technical aspects of it then should just be taught in a different type of education, like two-year university? No, or? technical. Because there are some technical aspects of psychology or well, business of, of or course, law. Of, of course. course there are. It's what is the question and what method should be used to investigate it. Somebody's got to teach those methods somewhere, is what well, I'm saying. They should teach them in psychology, and they should teach them in political science. But you're supposed to recognize what the most important questions are, and to recognize that those statistical methods that play an important role with some questions can't help us answer those questions, and they're the most important questions. So therefore, those techniques are not the most important techniques. They're important, but they're not the most important technique. They're supposed to help you develop common sense, which everyone knows is not very common. That's what higher education is trying to help you do. 